third time's the charm. Hey, Bruce Naylor, your boomer consumer. And despite the various technical problems I've had creating this video, I wanted to bring this to you and talk about the Edifier R1280 DBS, which I call a hi-fi system in a box. As a disclaimer, no one's reviewed this video prior to posting and all opinions are my own. However, Edifier did send these to me at no charge for review purposes. Now I'm gonna be having a contest in the near future to give away a pair of the Edifier R1280 TS speakers, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I call this a hi-fi in a box because literally all you have to do is add your source. Everything else you need comes in the box from Edifier. Your cables to connect it to you know, uh, your computer or to a smartphone, a tablet. You have your speaker wire. You have RCA cables to connect various sources. Everything you need is included. These are active speakers. They contain a 21 watt per channel amplifier. You have Bluetooth connectivity. You can connect a CD player, a, a, a turntable if it's got a phono stage with it. So auxiliary devices can connect to it. You can connect it to your computer. Video game console. It's got optical inputs as well, both uh, optical and coax. Everything you need to play your music, uh, listen to your audio, your television, your game consoles. Everything. It's all in one box. And it sounds doggone good for the price. All right, so with this, you get a 0.51 inch tw silk dome tweeter, a four inch woofer. You got a bass reflex port in the front so you can kind of put it closer to the wall if you want, and you won't have that muddiness or loss of bass response by having it up front. Very, very nice touch. On the side of the unit, that's where your power off and on button is. You also can use that to control the volume as well as change sources. And then you have a bass control and a treble control on there. That's a real nice touch to have it on there. So on the back of the unit, this is where all the action is. You have two RCA line inputs. So again, you can input you know, a CD player or MP3 player, whatever you want to put on there. A turntable if you've got a phono stage on there. You have optical input, you can connect TV, game console, or you know, digital source from say a CD player, etc. Coax input, you have a subwoofer out. So it, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Power off and on button, and then you have your speaker terminal uh, to connect your other edifier speaker to. And that's what goes on in the back of this. Also included is a remote. Let me see if I can get this into focus. If it would come on focus for me. Uh, the, the, the remote basically uh, allows you to raise the volume up and down, put it into standby mode, turn uh, the, now this is kind of, kind of a sound stage expander. We'll talk about that in just a moment, as well as changing your inputs, you know, your line one, line two, optical, coax, Bluetooth connection, and then muting and uh, unmuting the system. Bluetooth, by the way, the setup pairing was a very simple process. I'm not even going to, it was so simple. It, was, it, it just flat out works. So take my word for it on there. Uh, the remote control, by the way, is the one piece. I don't know if it's really going to last. It's, it's pretty plasticky, but if you're careful, it's also uh, gloss black and it's going to fingerprint real bad. But hey, who can complain? Build quality, MDF, it appears to be pretty solid. Available in uh, ebony, and you can get a walnut finish on it. This is, of course, the ebony. It appears to be pretty solid. Give you a kind of an idea on the size. This is your typical CD case. Let's take a look here. And so it actually measures, I believe, 5.7 inches in width. It is 9 point, I wrote this down, 9.2 inches tall, a little over 7 inches deep. It weighs maybe 5 pounds. It's not very heavy, but... It appears to be pretty solid. I'm, I can't really complain about that. Of course, you have a removable cloth grill, and uh, I happen to prefer my speakers without the grill covers on them. Give me your comment. Do you, do you like your speakers with or without the grill covers? Let me know in the comments down below. I call myself the everyday audiophile. I really probably don't listen to a lot of music that you know the audiophiles listen to. I'm more of a classic rock kind of guy. I like some new age stuff like Vangelis. I auditioned this with... Uh, uh, Chuck Mangione, West Side Story, the remastered edition of it, I believe. Uh, I listened to some uh, 
101 Jazz on TuneIn, one of my favorite uh, internet radio stations. So just kind of a whole plethora of different music. And so let's talk a little bit about, uh, and I won't bother you with the sound. Uh, sound demos are just a waste of time on the uh, YouTube. It's not even close. So I, I'm not even going to do the sound demos anymore. But I'll, I'll give you my experience with this. And I reviewed a number of speakers. I've been around my, my whole life practically. Let's start off with the bass. It's a four inch woofer. It's not going to shake your house. It's not going to do anything like that. I would recommend that if you're going to do serious listening with these, add a power subwoofer, okay? Uh, the, the lower bass is just not really, it doesn't have the oomph. The mid bass, more like a cello, that kind of thing, sounds pretty good. Uh, if you get into the uh, the mid-range, that's where I think is kind of a sweet spot for that lower uh, mid-range uh, in through there. Uh, voices, vocals were very good. Male voices, the deep ones, sound fantastic. No problem, no, no issue on that whatsoever. When we get up into the highs in the tweeter, now I'm kind of a Klipsch fan. I'll admit that. I kind of like the horn sound that presence that's really getting thrown out there. I have to admit though that I was pleased with the, the highs on here. It's not an overly bright speaker whatsoever. It, it's just not. Um, I would use the term it's more balanced. The highs are clean, clean. The mids are pretty clean. The bass, the lower bass is a little bit muddied again. You got that four inch woofer that you're dealing with on there, but you're getting a whole lot for your money and uh, a, a good subwoofer, you know, and then it really, I mean, a budget powered subwoofer would probably do some real justice to these. I recommend these for, you know, sitting close to them, near, near field listening. The sound stage was fairly impressive with these. Nice, wide, deep sound stage when you're sitting close. I really didn't test it from too far away because these are, I think, met more for a, a near field type of experience. Imaging, now that's a little bit different. Uh, I had these, first I had them straight on. I'm thinking, I'm not really locating where things are at in the sound stage. I'm not really locating those. So then I towed them in about 25 to 30 degrees. That improved slightly. Then at about a 45 degree angle toe in, which is pretty, pretty extreme. Uh, if you're sitting close, that did the trick. I could then kind of pick out where the singers were coming from, uh, the drummer, etc. As you move away, that imaging uh, begins to get a little bit uh, muddy, but that is to be expected um, in this type of speaker. So in the final analysis, uh, for the price of a retail price of 140 bucks, you're getting a lot for your money. You really are getting a hi-fi system in the box. All you do is add your source, and that can be your phone with Bluetooth um, or other devices, and hook it up to your computer. Yes, you can use it with gaming. Yes, you can use, you know listen to your gaming console with it. Hook it up to your television. It's way better than a speaker built into your TV, and probably sound better than a lot of inexpensive sound bars. You really got to spend some money on a decent sound bar before you're going to beat the overall quality of the Edifier R1280 DBS. Get yourself a little inexpensive subwoofer if you really want that deep thumping bass, but that is it. That is my review. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.